Welcome to AMRA Music. Today we're going to learn the basic process of restringing a keyboard percussion instrument such as a marimba or xylophone. To perform this task, you'll need the following items. The replacement cord, which can be standard 550 Type 3 parachute cord, which should be approximately 4 millimeters in diameter, or one of the other materials offered by the manufacturer of your specific instrument. A pair of scissors, a flame source such as a lighter or butane torch, a fabric marker, piece of chalk, or some other way to mark a specific spot on the replacement cord. Replacement connecting springs if the old ones are missing or unusable. Cut the existing cord with scissors if it is not already broken to remove it from the bars. Remove the connecting springs from the cord by pulling the cord by the knotted end. If you're restringing both sections, you'll want to start with the natural bars and end with the accidentals due to the staggered position of the two sets of bars. Measure out and cut the appropriate length of the cord you will need to complete the restringing of the section you're working on, leaving a bit extra to accommodate tying off each end. Burn the ends with a lighter or butane torch to seal them and prevent fraying. This will make the process of threading the cord through the holes in the bars much easier. Thread one end of the newly cut cord through the small end of one of the connecting springs. Slide the spring down the cord a bit and tie a knot. You'll need to tie a knot that is small enough to insert into the spring's large end, but large enough to not pass through the small end of the spring. Thread the cord through the bars one at a time, beginning on the larger end of the instrument, on one side of the bars, either lower or upper. Now thread the cord back through the opposite side of the same set of bars, leaving a small amount of slack on the small end of the instrument so the cord can be hooked around the suspension posts. Hook the cord around the upright suspension posts on both ends of the instrument and then position yourself by the larger end. Thread the empty side of the cord through the small end of the second connecting spring and slide it to a position that would easily connect with the other spring. The next step could take a little trial and error to accomplish. Pull firmly on both ends of the cord to make the bars raise up a little and the cord become taut. Trying your best to keep the cord tension you've just created, connect the other two springs together and then pull the loose half of the cord through to reinforce the created tension. This tension is what keeps the bars suspended where they can resonate freely. Remember never to pull so hard that the upright posts begin to bend. With the springs connected and the cord pulled tight enough to suspend the bars, make a mark on the cord along the bottom or smaller side of the spring with a piece of chalk, laundry marker, or whatever item that you found to mark that location. Now unhook the loose spring from the other one and slide the spring up the cord away from the cord's end. Tie a knot in the cord just on the other side of the spot you marked, on the side closest to the other connecting spring. Again, you'll need to tie a knot that is small enough to insert into the spring's large end, but large enough to not pass through the small end of the spring. You should now be able to hook the connecting springs together by pulling on both ends of the cord a bit, suspending the bars for full resonance. If you're restringing the accidental bars and you haven't already checked them, this is a great time to tap each bar with a finger or mallet to make sure that the bars are in the correct chromatic order. That's it. Thanks for letting me walk you through the process of restringing a keyboard percussion instrument. Thanks for joining us. Have a musical day.